Hey everyone, today I'm reviewing R.L. Stein's Broken Date. Uh, before I begin though, I just want to mention I've been playing around with the settings on my camera and trying to figure out the best way to record. And the last couple videos I uploaded, the camera is doing like this weird pulsating type thing where it kind of like just zooms in a little bit. And I believe the reason it was doing that from what I've discovered is it's trying to autofocus and it keeps as I move around and keep adjusting and everything like the it will keep doing that like trying to focus so I currently have it set to not autofocus but I did a test video after that and from what I've discovered it doesn't really seem to focus much at all and then the video quality overall doesn't seem to be quite as good but I'm going to try doing this video anyway without having the autofocus on let me know what you guys think down in the comments is the video quality okay uh, was the camera pulse hitting thing from before annoying and should I keep doing it like this? Uh, let me know your thoughts because I am very technologically impaired. <laughs> I'm not very good with techno uh, technology and camera settings and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, just let me know what your thoughts are and if I should continue to record videos um, like this video or if you liked it previously better. So anyways, I just finished Arl Stein's Broken Date recently. And this is a standalone title in Arl Stein's um, works and this was published in 1988 so pretty early in his career this was before Fear Street before Goosebumps and you can kind of tell R.L. Stein's writing is definitely not the best in this book and his writing has definitely evolved a lot <laughs> over time but this was still a fun read so this one is about Jamie who uh, her boyfriend stands her up on a date essentially and she goes shopping with her friend to the mall and she decides to go into a jewelry store by herself while her friend is trying on shoes or whatever. And in the jewelry store, she discovers that her boyfriend is robbing the place. There's no one else around. And he's uh, holding up the jewelry store owner and, you know, asking for the money and everything. And she, like, hides behind something and kind of watches for a minute. And then her boyfriend shoots the jewelry store owner and she runs out of there as fast as she can. And, you know, she tells her friend what happens, and they're all freaking out and everything, and uh, from there, she decides to uh, not go to the police for some reason, <laughs> and she just tries to figure out, like, why her boyfriend would do something like that, and what is she going to do about it, and then she starts receiving some threatening phone calls saying, um, along the lines of, I know you were there in the jewelry store. You shouldn't have been there. You shouldn't have witnessed what happened. Um, you're going to pay now. Things like that. Real uh, cheesy lines that are supposed to be very threatening, you know. Uh, that seems like a common trope in Arl Stein books. Is there's always like some kind of threatening phone call going on in these types of books uh, from a mysterious caller and a very deep and raspy voice. So <laughs> I don't know what it is about that, but that's a very common trope in these books, it seems like. And... Yeah, from there, she's just trying to figure out what's going on. She tries to talk to her boyfriend. They hang out a couple of times, and she tries to not let him suspect anything. And then maybe she's not so sure after all it was him. She It could be someone else that looked like him. And so, yeah, it's a lot of back and forth. And I enjoyed this book for the most part. It was, was a fun, quick, uh, easy read. Uh, it's not very challenging at all it doesn't require you to think very much in fact it actually requires you to suspend your disbelief quite a bit uh when they're when she's in the mall in the jewelry store and her uh, boyfriend shoots the jewelry store owner somehow no one else is around no one else hears it no one else sees it or anything and she runs out of the store and she's running just past crowds of people and they're all looking at her like she's you know being weird or something or why is she running through the store and yeah, somehow no one else manages to witness it. And then her decision to not go to the police is kind of ridiculous. You you really have to just suspend your disbelief and go along with these char or ridiculous character decisions to further the plot of the story. And there's some other stuff in here that's kind of goofy and just silly. But I had a fun time with this book. It's like I said, it's a quick, easy read and kind of cheesy, but it's just entertaining. And I'm just so comfortable reading these R.L. Stein books. I just love his writing style, and it's just, um, these books are just so nostalgic for me, and just such quick, cozy reads, and 
yeah, this was just a fun book. Um, it wasn't great or anything by any means at all. <laughs> Definitely not one of Arl Stein's better YA suspense thrillers. Again, this was written pretty early in his career before he had the whole thing figured out. And But it was still a, a fun, quick read. And the, the whole ending and climax of the story, that I wasn't really a big fan of, to be honest. It didn't really work for me all that much. Uh, the big twist and reveal kind of came out of nowhere. And there's a lot of really corny action at the end. And sometimes R.L. Stein does action pretty good. And sometimes his books can get pretty violent, surprisingly, for some of these young adult books. But this one in particular just felt a little bit corny. And I wasn't a huge fan of it and the big reveal and everything. But, like I said, it still wasn't bad. This was just an okay book. If you're a fellow R.L. Stein fan, I would definitely recommend giving this one a read. If you're not an R.L. Stein fan and maybe you just want to check out some of his books, I would recommend starting with a different one. This definitely isn't one of his best, but like I said, it's still not a bad one. So, yeah, I don't really have much to say about this book because it's pretty pretty straightforward, pretty surface-level thriller, and it's pretty short, too. It's only 150 pages. A lot of these young adult books are like 150 to 200 pages. But, yeah, I don't have much else to say about Arl Stein's Broken Day, guys. I give this one 2.5 out of 5 stars, which is... Uh, just an okay rating, but like I said, I enjoyed it. It's just just not a great book or anything. But yeah, what did you guys think of Broken Date, if you've read this one? And what are some other good R.L. Stein standalone books besides his Fear Street um, stories that might be really good or ones that you've really enjoyed? I'm definitely going to be continuing to review R.L. Stein books in the future. Of course, I have a few more of his standalone suspense thrillers. And yeah, a lot of other books I definitely need to get to by him. So what are your guys' thoughts if you have any on this book or any of his other work? And as always, guys, thanks for watching. And let me know what you think of the camera settings, if this works or not. Um, yeah, let me know too, guys, because like I said, <laughs> I'm an idiot when it comes to technology and trying to figure this stuff out. So all right, guys, peace.